what is expected of me and what is expected of God in this covenant. And that is where we're going to now. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy to the original people who received the covenant. And we're going to talk quite a bit in here. Help us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Okay, the covenant of salvation. I wish this would be read at altar calls. I wish in the first century when you go back and you look at the early church and you look at the history and read it, before people got saved, they made sure they knew what they were getting into. There was a process. You didn't just come up like that. They wanted to make sure you knew what you were getting into because the Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall yeah. into the hands mm -hmm. of a living God. It was not something to be taken lightly because those Jewish brothers and sisters, they understood about covenant. Paul was a Jew. Peter was a Jew. Every single follower of Jesus was a Jew until Cornelius came about three and a half years after Jesus died and rose from the dead. So for the first about three and a half years, there was nothing but Jewish people. So when the Gentiles start coming in, they're like, all right, boys. Do you know what you're getting into here? This is a lifelong commitment. There's going to be blessings. There's going to be curses. You know, yeah, there's salvation. There's eternal life. But you got to die to yourself in this thing is what Paul said. You're going to have to crucify your flesh. Yeah, you're going to have to take your cross up and follow the Messiah daily. And they're like, well, I can do that. Well, it's kind of like, do you know what that means? Kind of like when uh, those brothers came, the mom of those brothers came to Jesus and said, I want my sons to sit at your right hand. And, and he said, are you able to drink from the cup that I'm going to drink from? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can drink from that cup. They didn't know what they were saying, but he did. Yeah. He said, well, yeah, you will drink from this cup. He said, but to grant to sit on my right and left is not mine but the Father's. But they didn't know what they were asking. Jesus knew. He knew them boys was going to yeah. die for him one day. They had no idea. But you're going to get there. He's like, but you're going to suffer some things first. Through much tribulation shall we enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So right here, the altar call if I were to give it. This is it. He, this is God speaking here to Moses and the people. He said, and uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, starting at verse 16, if you're following along. It said, Today Adonai, your God, orders you to obey these laws and rulings. Therefore, you are to observe and obey them with all of your heart and with all of your being. Well, that sounds a lot like Jesus. Uh, they said, What must I do to be saved? And he goes on, what's the greatest commandment, Lord? And he said, to love God with all of your mm -hmm. heart, yeah. all of your soul, and all your being, and to love your neighbors yourself. Well, that sounds good. It's easy to say, well, I, yeah, I got that. I love God. Well, God said, well, let me now tell you. Jesus said again, remember, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yeah, amen. So here, he said, with all your heart and all your being. He said, you are agreeing today, agreeing that Adonai is your God, and that you will follow his ways, observe his laws, commandments and rulings and you will do what he says he says you're agreeing to this he said i want to, he told the children of israel i want you to know what you're getting into today yes i saved you first and that's the thing salvation comes before commandments if you look at the ten commandments on mount sinai when god brought them there the first part of this is he says i am the god who brought you out of egypt he reminded them yeah, salvation yeah. came first they did nothing to deserve that salvation the righteousness of one man Abraham, the righteousness of one man is why they got saved. Not because of their righteousness. They weren't living right. I guarantee you they were living in sin. They were people. But Abraham, that one man was righteous and God made him a promise. I will take your descendants and I will save them. So God reminds us in the Ten Commandments, salvation comes first. I am the God that brought you out of Egypt. Right after that, he says, you shall have no other gods before me. Yeah, and then the commandments come. Because now he's teaching them. He says, I saved you. But now we're about to enter into a covenant. I'm about to become your God. Right now I'm Abraham's God. I'm Moses' God. But I'm about to become your God. And when that happens, he's saying, you need to know what that means. Moses understands it. Abraham understood it. But I need you to understand it. He said, so I'm going to make it very blunt and very clear. And you're going to make sure you come into agreement today. And we're going to read. They go through and he names it. And they have to say amen, which means I agree to everything. Just like a marriage. God broke this down to me a while ago and had me write it and split it in two. We're going to read about the agreement and we're going to read about the wedding vows. And so people love to sing that they're the bride of Christ. And we love to sing about revelation and teach about revelation. And when he comes and the bridegroom catches the bride up. But marriage is hard if you've ever been married. I've been married for 18 years. 
I know what it takes to be faithful because I've been faithful Amen. to my wife. Yeah. I've sacrificed for my wife. I put my life on the line for my wife. I've sweat and bled for my wife. I understand what that means. But we live in a world where marriage means nothing. Yeah. So when I Amen. talk about covenant and I talk about marriage, it's foreign to people because they don't see it in their day to day life. They don't know what marriage means. They have never committed to nothing. If you don't like it, it's like a 30 day trial period. Yeah. Go Amen. get an annulment and be done with it. When God said it's till death do you part, glory yeah. to God. Amen. God said that when you come in covenant like that, there is no, I don't care if you like it. I don't care if your spouse gets on your nerves. You'll do it till the last breath because you made a commitment yeah, to that person. And God bless his holy name. I feel in his presence amen. right now. Glory to God. Amen. We don't know how to keep commitment anymore. Yeah. Bless his holy amen. name. And he said, I'm going to make sure he to those people. He said that you know what you're getting into. He said, because there's going to be blessings, but there's going to be curses. Amen. If you decide to commit adultery on me and go out and commit fornication yeah. with other gods. Glory to God. Amen. Bless Praise his God. holy name. Yeah. Amen. He said, in turn, now that this is his part. In turn, Adonai is agreeing that you are his own unique treasure, as he promised you, that you are to observe his commandments, and that he will raise you high above the nations that he has made in praise, in reputation, in glory, and that as he said, you will be a holy people for Adonai your God. So that's the thing. He said, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to bless you. The nations will know that you're my people, but you're going to do something too. That's what I would tell people at altar calls. To understand that when they come up and pray at that altar, what they're doing is saying, I'm getting grafted in. Yeah, I'm about to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one that says to fear the holy God, yeah, the righteous amen. God, the almighty God El Shaddai. We all talk about the love and the mercy, but we don't like to talk about the holiness, yeah, glory amen. to God. And that's that part of love where God has a biblical definition and the world has a separate definition. So we like that part that's accepting, but we don't like the part that says to come out from amongst the world and to be separate. Yeah, amen. So going into 27, we're now going to go through the agreement. And we're not, I don't know, maybe we will, I don't know. But I don't think we're going to go through every single one of these. Um, but I want to go through enough that you get the gist of what they had to do that day. So, Moses commissioned the people. He calls them up there, and he says, now boys, it's time to go into covenant. He said, I'm about to say some things, and if you don't agree to any of these, then you ain't entering into this covenant. You have to agree to every single thing that God had told me to tell you, is what Moses said. Or you ain't got no part in this. Yeah, amen. And one day, I, we're going to say amen to these as our own condemnations if we don't say amen to them now. So he starts telling them on here about some of the things that's going to happen in the curses. Because he wants them to know up front what they're getting into. God is not trying to scare people, deceive people, because he's worried about how many numbers of people that got saved yeah, that day. Amen. God said, I want you to know what you're coming into or don't even be a part of this. He said, a curse on anyone who makes a carved or metal image, something that Adonai detests, the handiwork of a craftsman, and sets it up in secret. All the people are to respond by saying, Amen, which means I agree. A curse on anyone who dishonors his father or mother. All of the people are to say, Amen. A curse on anyone who moves his neighbor's boundary marker, trying to steal their land, basically. All the people are to say, Amen. A curse on anyone who causes a blind person to lose his way on the road, taking advantage of the disabled. All the people are to say amen. A curse on anyone who interferes with the justice for the foreigner, the orphan, or the widow. All the people are to say amen. A curse on anyone who has sexual relations with his father's wife because he has violated his father's rights. All the people are to say amen. A curse on anyone who has sexual relations with any kind of animal. All the people are to say, Amen. A curse on anyone who has sexual relations with sister, no matter whether she is the daughter of his father or mother. All the people are to say, Amen. A curse on anyone who secretly attacks a fellow member of the community. All the people are to say, Amen. A curse on anyone who accepts a bribe to kill an innocent person. All the people are to say, Amen. So God did that for a reason he showed me. When things happen in our life, the first person we blame is God. Right? Yeah. I hear it all the time. Well, 
you know, God allowed this to happen to me, and he let this person get sick, and I lost my job, and he let this person die, and my car broke down, and all this, and I, but what God has revealed, look to you first, yeah. and don't, I know I entered into a covenant, and there's blessings, and there's curses, if I'm having all these bad things happen to me, am I living in sin? If I'm living in sin, I curse myself. Because that's what he made them do that day. Just let them know, no, this ain't on me, boys. You cursed yourself. You stood the day and said, amen to the curse. That's what you did the day you got saved. There's a thing in the law, in man's law in the United States, that says ignorance is no excuse for violation of the law. If a cop pulls you over and the speed limit is 35 miles an hour and you're doing 55, and you look at that officer and you say, well, officer, I thought it was 55 miles an hour. It doesn't matter. He's going to say, well, you should have known. It don't matter. It's posted back there. Yeah, and you're getting a ticket. Right. You're going to go tell it to the judge. That's what I've heard. I, how many times have I heard cops go tell it to the judge, right? Yeah. That ain't my job. Tell it to the judge. Same thing here. Ignorance of the law is no excuse for violation of it. But when things come and it feels like our life is cursed, maybe it is. But we need to look because we are God's people. It is a fearful thing to fall into his hands because yeah, he amen. showed me many times. When you know him, you never stop knowing him. You can backslide. Yeah. You can run from him. Glory to God. But you are now his. Amen. You're his. So even out in the world, when you go back and you're drinking and you're doing drugs and you're fornicating and you're doing all these things, Satan still can only do to you what God allows. Now, if you've never known him, Satan can do whatever he wants to you. But once you've known him, he's still got to get permission so a lot of times it ain't Satan doing it to you. It's the own curses, your own curses, because you're breaking covenant yeah, with God. Yeah. And God's just like any parent that loves their kids. When they mess up, you punish them because you want them to be better kids. You're yeah, not going to allow your children to run around acting like heathens and expect them to grow up and be good people. You're going to punish them. You're going to reprimand them because yeah. you love them, yeah. bless God. But you're still not going to let the enemy come and hurt your children child because that's still your kid yeah. we joke yeah. about it about the old movie we used yeah. to watch mom where it said they may be rotten praise yeah, god but, but they're, they're mine rotten. right and mom yeah. knows about rotten kids <laughs> bless god because she's had a few of them but <laughs> you keep covenant with those children no yeah. matter what they do glory to god but we've been whipped plenty of times Dad was a firm believer and not sparing the rod, bless yeah, God. Amen. We needed punishment as kids because we messed up a lot. Bless his holy name. That's how it works today. But I don't blame mom or dad. I blame me. I did stuff. I needed whooped. Jason did stuff. Needed whoopings. Needed them. Needed them. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> But amen. that's what you do when you love your children. Yeah, amen. But we broke covenant because they had rules in our house. We broke them right and left. We were rebellious. We didn't like rules. We said, no, we're, I hear your rules, but our way we know better, right? Every teenager knows better than their parents what their parents know. So we said, we're going to do it our own way, our own plan of salvation. We're going to rebel against the leaders of the home and what they say. And it never ended good, right? Because yeah, the fifth amen. commandment says to honor your father and your mother, yeah, that your amen. days may be long on the earth, and he who curses father or mother will be cursed, bless God. The first commandment that gives a promise with it is what Paul talks about. The first commandment, that's how serious God took it. Not loving God, not blaspheming. He said, that's how important I see this. He said, your parents and your relationship with them are so important. And it's so that you can understand God. The relationship starts at home. And we've lost that. Yeah, fathers amen. are no longer fathers. They're not even in the picture. They're gone. We feminize men in our society. Yeah, where our amen. young boys don't even know what a man's supposed to be. Women no longer do anything in the home. Yeah. They want to take, just like Eve, they want to take the seat over Adam, yeah, bless God. Amen. And so God knew that the only way you could truly know him and understand that covenant relationship was the first covenant you ever enter into in this life is the covenant with your family, with your mother, and with your father, bless God. So that's why the enemy has tried to destroy that. And that's why God gave that commandment a promise. Because yep, if amen. we could get it right there, we could start to understand what a father's like. When I hear about a heavenly father, I didn't have uh, the best loving father growing up. So I didn't understand that. So when I thought of God, it was easy for me to see some dictator that kind of ruled and said, you'll do what I say. Because that's kind of what I've seen. 
Not to speak ill of my father, but that's what I see. Yeah. 